All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching live on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. You are watching Full Auto with Dimitri, also known as Point Down, Point Down like that. That says Professor Rambo where he's pointing. See that? So we have Professor Rambo. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right there you go. You got it. You got it. You got it. And I'm and I'm Paul Gordon. And this is Full Auto. We've got a number of show stories to talk about here. So I think that I mean, our, our, I, 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 would you agree with me? On the top story that we're going to go to right away. Are you ready to go to this top story right away? Or do you have something to share with the studio audience before we dive into this uh, this love fest that we're about ready to hit hit our audience with? Oh, uh, this is going to be a buzzkill for sure. Let's start with something light, like the meaning of Professor Rambo. Okay, let's do that. Let's talk about the meaning of Professor Rambo. And go. So, um, a cousin of mine uh, calls up and he goes... Um, he goes, you, 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 I, I hope this doesn't offend you, um, but all the boys down here came up with... Can I, know, I, can I, I, I want to clarify a point. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, Greek Georgia boy. Just put that out there. That's what we're talking Greek about. Greek Georgia boys. Greek Georgia boys, okay? They they speak Greek like this. Thelo na supokati. Teraste apto spiti mu na supokati. <laughs> right, I don't know what that So means. they speak Greek with a southern draw. That's awesome. It is incredible. That is, that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Anyway, go ahead. So, uh, we go hunting down there, and there's a, there's a bunch of guys that hang out, and we all talk smack and drink and smoke. And, uh... Cigarettes, folks, cigarettes. Of course, um... Actually, more like cigars. Cigars. Oh, that's right. Cigars. cigars. Fine the the, quality. The cheaper, the right. better. What's your favorite kind of cheaper cigar right now? Dutch Masters. Dutch Masters, baby. The flavor oh, flavors. Baby. The flavor Love flavors it. or the no flavors? Well, a little both. A little bit, a little bit of both. That's nice. Like, sometimes I like the plain green wrapper. It's a nice, mild. I think it's called a Candela wrapper. It's a really mild smoke. You know, you can smoke those all day and not get, you know, lightheaded or woozy. Not get high. Yeah. So one of the guys was trying to remember my name and he goes, I can't remember his name. You know the guy, Professor Rambo. And uh, it stuck. It stuck hard. And oh, the, the, oh, the guy up, didn't remember who you were. And, oh, he, and he just referred to you as. Yeah, he couldn't remember my name. He goes, you know, that cousin of yours, the guy, the professor who's also like the Rambo guy, Professor Rambo. <laughs> right. So he's like, because you, you are like the egghead of guns. That's like, that, well, yeah. You put yeah. the, it's like, you know, most most uh, gun enthusiasts are like, yo, man, it's a gun. It's a gun. Look, it's got a big caliber and it shoots and it makes a big noise. And you come along and you're like, well, you know, interesting factoid. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're the interesting yeah. factoid guy that comes along about guns, so. Yeah. So he's Professor Rambo, and I don't have a nickname. I don't have so, any Greek Georgia cousins. Yeah. So um, I um, I wasn't at all insulted, but I was delighted. I was like, that's probably one of the best nicknames I've ever had. So now he is, uh, you know, for he's been Professor Rambo for a while, and he's only recently said, you know what, I need to come out of the Rambo closet. And it's true. Declare my Professor Rambo ness to the world. It yes. took him a while. For a while, he's just been Mr. One Name Dimitri. Now he's two names. Now he's Professor Rambo. But I'm sorry, Professor Rambo. During the show, I will be referring to you as Dimitri. Uh, <laughs> it ain't you, can just call, you can call me Rambo or Professor either. I, I, like, it, I like it when you lean back because you almost leave the shot and then our audience doesn't have to see your face fully. And that's totally cool. When you're doing a video show... You want your co-host to not be in the shot because that's why you do video in the first place. Are you ready to get to the show to the to the top story here? Not really. Oh, really? You got? No, I don't. Think, you got something I don't more? Think you can. I I don't think you can ever you're, be ready. You're a little for, depressed. You can never be ready. Uh, uh, 
to talk about how Ruger sold out to the big cities. Oh, yeah. Or how Smith & Wesson sold out to the Clintons. Or how any other of these gun manufacturers sells out. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm, and well, you don't realize this, but I'm actually scrolling behind you the, fir- the article that we'll be talking about. Which is this way or that? Which way is it? Scrolling? It would be yeah, 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 pointing that way. Scrolling that way? No, it's it's scrolling that way and then down. Um, it goes. Oh well, no, actually, it goes up. It's going up. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, no, I really don't want to get into this subject, but we have. But we to. have to because it's a pretty big story in the gun and because world. Because Springfield huge. Armory is like one of my favy faves. Yeah, um, I I used to own a Springfield myself until until the, the boat the boating accident. accident. Yeah. So, I, I used to have an XD. I really like that. Gun. I I read a lot about the XDs, and I, you know, you talk to Glock enthusiasts, and they're like, "Well, you know, if I couldn't get a Glock, um, you know, it'd be either be that C, that new CZ, the number ten or something. It's that nine mil, or an XD. The you know, XDs are okay. They're not great. You know, they're clunky compared to a Glock, but you know, they're reliable. Yeah, I know. Clunky compared. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're both clunky. I mean, I'm not saying either one is not right. clunky. Yeah. And they're both reliable, and they're both Right, really right. They're powerful. very similar, actually. They're very yeah. similar in that way. But I, I would say this, the checks, the checks, sorry, the, um, well, the checks did get it yeah, right. Yeah, the checks, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the XD is a check gun, basically. It's made, it's no, manufactured. No, Croat- Croatian. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Duh. No, to you, all those Europeans wow. are all the same. The, I know. Well, Eastern Europeans are all the same. The the, yeah. the Western well, Europeans it's... are distinctive, and they have their own distinctive cultures. Eastern well, Europeans blend into like one nice. Greek Eastern Orthodox fizzle that I can't. You know what I mean? It, it's nice that the Eastern Europeans were able to to innovate the concept that Glock stole from them, and you know, kind of ran with. The Austrians, so we, the, the, yeah. the, the Austrians. What did I say? The Glock is Austrian, yeah. so yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, the Austrians have a way of, you know, stealing Eastern European ideas and then... Or just invading countries and failing miserably at it. Well, yeah. World War One. But they're much better at stealing ideas, remarketing them as their own, and then, you know... Kind of like what the Swedes do with the Finns. Well, what would you, know, you the rather do? All this innovation, and the Swedes come along. It's no, it's Swedish. You know, I'd rather be the uh, the the ripper offer who perfects the design and and uh, capitalizes on it than the innovator. I'm not going to lie to you. So you're not so, a big so you're not a big fan of uh, what's his name, the guy from that developed all this theory about electricity, the Eastern European guy. Was oh. he Oh, uh, Mark, Mark, Tesla. Hon- or Tesla, yeah. Oh, Tesla. yeah. Oh, no, You're no, more, Te- I, oh, I'm a big fan of Tesla. Yeah. I'm just saying you'd rather, you'd, you'd rather be, uh, Bell. You'd rather be Bell and, than Steal Tesla. Steal his ideas, and, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm not saying which one is, is ethically better. I'm just saying which one I would rather be. Oh, of course. Yeah, because you've got some money in your I pocket. I've got some sugar, baby. And you know, if I had sugar, I get me some guns, and that's what. Well, you have a lot to replace because and I, I have none now, so I got to start from, you know, start from zero. I got to start with my ankle gun, you know, like, uh, you know, what I'm saying I got to get a, a like a North American Arms uh, ankle gun or something. Why would you shoot people in the ankles? No, no, it's an it's a little you know North American Arms, you know, little derringers, okay. little cute little derringers. Big yeah. waste of time. Yeah. We're gonna get to Springfield Armory. We're gonna get to Could this you please? story. You please, okay. I hear the cricket. Oh my gosh, you're the one who led us down Cricket Trail Road. Because I just don't want to talk about this. Right, but we have to. Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms sell out Illinois FFLs. So this is in this is on bearing arms. Just in fair in fairness, they are at least. Spring, I read something where Springfield Armory said, "We didn't know what we were signing up for. We are totally against this." Well. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. First, we're going to get to this. This is a three-part story, and I don't want to. Yeah, you're 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 putting the cart before the horse, dude. I'm going to run this out in a logical fashion. It's going to be great. So, Mm -hmm. Second Amendment. uh, I'm not going to go through this whole article here, but you can go to Bearing Arms and find the article. But the the gist of it is, I'll give you the very cliff note version of this. Essentially. 
there's a bill in the Illinois legislature that will well will basically raise the fees for uh, independent small dealers. And there is a lobbyist that is paid by uh, Springfield Arms and Rock River whose job it is to basically be a watchdog on the legislature and aggressively go after these anti-gun laws. And this lobbyist just kind of nowhere to be found, didn't do anything. And then when the legislation comes out, what you find is that there was a carve-out a carve-out for Springfield and a carve-out for Rock River that gave them special exemptions in this legislation. It, I mean, by all appearances, it would appear to me that they they got paid off and they got a nice little uh, sugar kickback for not going after them. So now after that happened, what you saw was all throughout Illinois – Gun owners were, I don't know if they were, they didn't have a gun burning, so, because they're not books, that'd be hard. But, but gun owners were like, I, ain't, I am not going to get another Springfield, not going to get a Rock River gun. And uh, the, the dealers were putting their, even the, even the, the, the big dealers, they were putting their Springfield guns away. And the reason they were putting their Springfield guns was, they like, well, nobody wants them. And, and they were talking about, well, we don't even know, like, uh, what are we going to do with the inventory that we have? So, at least in the state of Illinois, but this is beyond Illinois. This is starting to spread everywhere. It's, you know, it's this is this is as bad as Ruger. What they did, when was it, in the 70s or... Yeah, in the 80s, where... Yeah. Yeah, they kind of capitulated to the, took, took to the powers that be. Took them a long while to recover from that. And I'm not sure what, what Springfield... Well, they're in damage control. Do you want me to get to the second part, or do you have something more to say about this part? Well, Smith & Wesson really sold out in, to the Clintons. By, right, right. You know, they totally bent over backwards to accommodate the Clintons. Right. It's like, uh So here we go again. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you have a, you're, uh, allegedly, you have this uh, pro-gun president, and you got a pro-gun federal legislature, at least. Meanwhile, in Illinois... Springfield is uh, rolling over and rolling over hard. Springfield is kind of rolling over like Paul Ryan rolls is, over. Uh, oh, That's another story. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's another Why st- would you introduce that? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Is uh, Rock River Arms uh, a subsidiary of Springfield? Are they... Uh, I don't know. How are they affiliated? I don't know. Let me, let me, let me look in the, in the thing here in, in, in Artemical here and see. I, I, I they, they... Or do they just oh, by use the, the way, same lobbyist? The, the, the Rock River guy came out almost immediately and said, whoa, 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 we don't support this. We have no idea what this is. We have no idea why our lobbyists did this. So we don't know what's going on. But the Springfield Arms was silent. I'm not sure if they're a subsidiary. I can't find it very quickly. So uh, somebody can look that up and and, and let Dimitri know. God, God bless Professor Rambo. The man needs to So know. what were you saying about Paul Ryan? Oh, the, the he's just basically there. Essentially, I don't have a dog in this fight. What state is he from? Paul Ryan is from Wisconsin. Oh, that's perfect. The weasel from Wisconsin. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. First, the weasel, the weasel from, from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Basically, you have a Republican legislature at the national level that has passed essentially a Democrat. Uh, <laughs> so how budget. are you how can you be see this this perplexes me how can you be a weasel and a rhino at the same time oh they're, they're one in the same, same. I, I, you're, you're, I i don't want to get down this road because i could say stuff that that uh my my studio audience would not appreciate so i'm going to stick to this story if you don't mind because i'm going to get to the uh, second part of the story that and, guy reminds me of eddie munster and for those watching the video, you can see we're now at Springfield Armory blog and the Springfield Armory statement. And I'm going to read this bad boy, if you don't mind, Mr. Dimitri. Eddie Munster. Eddie Munster. Oh, well, this you is interesting. Going. 
I'm looking at here. I don't see much as far as social media. Well, okay, they got 6,000 likes. Okay, never mind. Springfield Armory has always fought hand-in-hand hand with the NRA, NSSFISRA, and many others for legislation that fiercely, fiercely protects the Second Amendment, individual rights, and the industry as a whole. Our fight continues today as some members of the Illinois legislature are pushing to overregulate the industry through gun dealer licensing, through the Gun Dealer Licensing Act. At the time of my initial statement to the media, I was ill-informed of the ramifications of this bill and its detrimental effects to the Second Amendment, which I have personally fought to protect my entire life. Who is I, I? This is Chief Executive o Officer Dennis Reese. I can assure you now, we at Springfield Army are unequivocally 100% against this bill and will continue to work with the... And now they say it when it's almost too late to stop it. And we'll continue with the NR, to work with the NRA and others to ensure that it is defeated. Uh, re... Uh, we thought we could get away with this, and then we found out that people were really ticked. So, hey, the deal's pretty much already done anyway. Hey, let's pretend to fight it. Oh, man, we tried to fight it. It's just, man, it so you win hard. some, you lose some. It's so hard. Oh, it's so hard can't to fight. Can't believe they left that exemption in for us. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, nice. Springfield Armory, like Rock River Arms, was not aware of the actions taken by our trade association, IFMA, until after the fact. We take this situation very seriously and are looking into how this very unfortunate lapse to communication, uh, in communication occurred. So, in short, they're either grossly incompetent or, or, or are in bed with the politicians in Illinois. Either way, I'm going to bet number two. I'm going to totally bet number two. I'm going to totally bet that these guys thought that they could get away with this, and now they're trying to walk it back after they say, holy moly. There's, I mean, I thought we would tick off a few, you know, small gun dealers. Man, even even the gun owners are mad at us. I don't, I don't get it. Springfield Armory has fought and defeated legislation like this in Illinois. For the past 15 years, we are wholeheartedly against this bill and will fight to see it defeated as the unnecessary and harmful overreach that it is. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Trey Gowdy. Who be that? Who be that? Trey Gowdy? You know who Trey Gowdy is? Oh, uh, I'm Trey Gowdy, you know. I, I call people in. I call people in for hearings, and I ask them really, really tough questions, and then, and then people make viral videos about me, and they say, Terry Gowdy totally destroys Hillary Clinton. Terry Gowdy totally destroys the IRS head. But yet, nothing really happens from all of the bluster that comes out of my blustery mouth. We, you know, they used to say that about me that the boom has entered the room. Well, the boom enters the room, but once it enters the room, it don't do nothing. And it definitely has no ramifications outside the room. That's what this statement is. It sounds hard. It sounds decisive. It sounds, oh, man, Springfield Armory, man. Did you see that? Did you hear what that CEO said? Man, he totally owned them. Owned them. Ooh, with words. With words. Now, why do I say all this? Why do I say, Dimitri, do you know why I say Cause you, all this? Because you like I, to hear yourself do impressions of people. Well, that too, but I didn't mean that specifically. That was pretty good. That, I would say that was pretty good. <laughs> I, I now know who Trey Gowdy is. You remember him, that. right? You're with the slick back. I got yeah. the slick back hair, you know. Uh, you know why I said that all this, don't you? I'm not just whistling in in against the wind here, man. I, I have a reason for saying this because I have more information for my folks. Do you know what more information I have, Dimitri? Do you care? Know, because you... your lips and your voice are, are not synced on my Skype right now, and that is screwing with me. You just deal with it, son. All right. 
Oh, my God. That is creepy. All right. Here we go. Here are the headlines. Ready? Boom. No. Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms made campaign contributions to anti-gun rights politicians. Boom. Oh, that's Ooh. like that's when Trey Gowdy, oh, you know, no. Trey Gowdy can't be found for comment. Oh, no. I mean, he can't be count found. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So there's a... Well, what kind of contributions? Did they give him, like, a can of Pepsi? Or did they give him, like, $20 Ooh, million? Dollars? If they had given them a can of Pepsi, there'd be peace in the valley, right? Mm. Isn't, that, isn't that the story with the Antifa thing? The Pepsi and the... Never mind. Oh, right. 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 I thought you were referencing... See, I, th I gave you too much credit there. I gave you <laughs> too much credit. I like to be subtle. You you kind of just killed that subtlety in my joke, but that, please go on. Go I'm on. going on. So in 2012, IFMA wrote a check for $10,000 to Illinois Senate President oh. John Cullerton's campaign fund. IFMA, that's the, the, the trade association that Springfield and Rock River uh, belong to. And when we say belong to, that means that they send those. So if... The IFMA gave him money. This is from a website, thetruthaboutguns.com, which, by the way, I visit regularly. The yeah, NRA, the NRA PFV F-rated Cullerton. That means that when it comes to guns, Cullerton be sucking it hard. Okay, uh, I think you can. You okay? I've said enough. He has stood out, stood in the way of pro-gun rights legislation in Illinois for years. He and here's the, the the if you're looking at the thing you the video here if you're listening to the audio on ipmnation.com you're probably after you listen to the audio maybe at some point uh, wander on over to Facebook and uh, Liberty Principle and you can find the video and see what I'm talking about here when I when I say that I'm highlighting ooh ooh ooh. I'm highlighting there the committee to elect Jennifer Dorato. Okay, there it is. Citizen for John Collerson. There it is. $10,000. Mm -hmm. And the above is from page 8 of the IFMA 2012 IRS Form 990. IMA FMA also donated $1,000 to the Illinois Senate Democratic Victory Fund. The expenditure failed to appear on IFMA's federal form for the year. Now, IFMA's $50,000 payment to J. Alexander oh, Hunt, no. Inc., listed in the 2012 form, also caught our eye. IFMA's lobbyist, Jay Keller, does business under the name J. Alexander Hunt, Inc. The company shares a post office address. So it's also... Uh, uh, Given money to uh, uh, this uh, uh, J. Alexander Hunt. So, yeah, you're, you're going to want to check out the truth about guns. And the money from Rock River Arms and Springfield Armory channeled through IFMIA, however, failed to convince Cullerton to moderate his antipathy to gun rights. Not long after the cash, Cullerton appeared at a gun control event. Now, Unfortunately, Dimitri, you're not going to hear this, but our studio audience will hear a part of this because I'm going to play a video here that's a, 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 right in here. And this is, this is the speech that the guy who got money from basically Springfield Arms and Rock River gave. I'm, just, I'm not going to play the whole thing, just a part of it. Here we go. Progress Un Illinois, United Power for Action and Justice. Do not stand idly by. We are the only state in the nation that doesn't have a conceal and carry law. I'm really proud of that. So he, he's uh, receiving a loud applause because he says they're the only uh, state that doesn't have a conceal carry law. <laughs> loud, loud I'm applause. But the, the Seventh Circuit said that our ban on carrying ready... We would have liked to have had it that way, but the Seventh Circuit said no, no. I'm not going to play the rest of this. I just wanted to play that small part. That That's enough. That's enough to show you what it is that we're talking about. So, Dimitri, what happens to Springfield and Rock Island after this? 
Well, I don't know what's going to happen to them. I don't have a crystal ball. What I know, I know I won't be buying their guns anymore. I know they're off of my consideration. I'm. I was yeah. thinking about. I know, and you know what's. This is a terrible, terrible timing for them because they have a new gun out. Actually, a gun that I was actually excited. I, I, I can't remember the exact. Do you remember the name of the gun? It's uh, the XD. It's it's a single stack. Ooh. XD. It's a oh, nine no, mil the... single stack XD. I'm, I well, can't it's remember. the M. It's either the XDM or the XDS. I'm... Yes, I think it's the S. Yes. So uh, I don't. If I'm wrong, it's Dimitri's fault. But they're coming in. They're, they're now entering the. Uh, I mean, I, I consider it pocket carry. Some people probably think it was a stretch, but I would consider it pocket carry. The the pocket carry uh, field combat com, combating directly with the the Ruger LS9, which I love that gun by the way uh they now have a single stack the competing with the glock what is it the which one which one of those is it the 40 well whatever it is 43 or 40 i always confuse them but the 40s the glock 40s one that's a single stack that everybody got excited about first Glock came out with the 380 single stack then the nine mil single stack and and just as they're doing this they have this really this this horrible pr nightmare I, I I think that this is going to have, I don't know how lasting an effect it's going to have on Springfield, but I would wager, I'd say the next couple of years are going to be a little bit, some, some potential growth that they might have been able to see, they might not be seeing uh, in the near future. Look, they, they put out a damn good product, right? And if this was... Sure. If this was 20 years ago, I'd say, yeah, they put out a good, damn good product, you know. Suck it up. That These are your choices. But when you look at the firearms renaissance we're in right now and all of these other manufacturers coming up with products that are just as good or comparable, startups that are producing fantastic products with performance envelopes that are off the charts – Springfield's going to have a hard time with this, I think, because, I mean, I, I, I always wanted the M1A in 308, but I've just located half a dozen AR-type platforms and AK-47-type platforms that will chamber an AR, um, a 308 or even a 30 6 reliably. And these are some of the startup companies that I'm talking about. So, you know... If you had your eye on a Springfield M1A in 308 and now you're kind of hesitant, you might start looking around for alternatives and oh my gosh, there's all these alternatives. Yeah. Really they're... good alternatives that actually might be better platforms. AR type platforms that will chamber 308 even and 30-06. E e even if they're comparable. Correct. That's bad enough for Springfield. Springfield right. has to come out with something that's extraordinary, like nobody else has. And and even this this single stack nine, I'm sorry, Springfield's yeah, actually so many, kind of a giant come so lately many, to that mark. Correct, correct. There's so many single stack nines and even single stack forties now. Right. I mean car makes a I think it's car makes a small single stack forty that's just remarkable. I think it's single stack, but nevertheless, it's a very small firearm that handles forty cal. They're a dime a dozen. Yeah, I don't know what they actually will have, have gained or will have attempted to gain from this this clever little move. And, well, and this nobody... clever little move, I want to thank them for this clever little move because by doing this, they have exposed the fact that they have been contributors of the exact same people who are anti-firearms. And particularly in Illinois, it's not like it's the freest state in the country for firearm ownership. They're very restrictive. I mean, their leadership all comes out of Chicago. Oh, wait, did I mispronounce that? Let me, I got it right. Chicago. Chicago. I didn't. Chicago. I wouldn't want to live there. I'll tell you that. I... Yeah. So, I... I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to belly up or, I mean, there's still people that are going to buy their guns. They're just going to miss out. 
I believe they're going to miss out. Unless yeah. I, I think the only way that they can save face is if they manage to kill this bill. And they do uh, it really they do. aggressively. They're funding anti-gun groups. Yeah, they're 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 yeah, they're <laughs> they're <laughs> when you're when you're when you're sending money to politicians who are absolutely vehemently opposed to your right to bear arms. And you're a gun company. You're you've done You're this. in the enemy enemy camp. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. You're 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 too cute for school. You're trying to hedge your bets, maybe. That's probably what you're trying to do. Well, like like Ruger did, like Smith and Wesson did, like Colt has done. I mean, the, these guys, all the big boys, start kissing up to the politicians, and then you have the little guys who start moving in and saying, "Hey, give us a try." And you know what? I am. I I, I would I would never buy a Springfield M1A now. I just, I I have no interest. Again, for me for me personally, if Springfield does everything, well, no, actually, you got a good point. Even if they do kill the legislation, that that, that funding, funding anti-gun dudes, it's like, wow, this is this is who and what you are. You never know how what if your money is going to help uh, fund somebody who wants to make it much more difficult, if not impossible, for you and, to actually have a gun. You know, I was I was looking at a firearm recently, and it was a Smith and Wesson, and I, I have a problem with Smith and, Smith and Wesson because I became firearms knowledgeable and aware in, in the political sphere in and around the time that the Clintons were putting the squeeze on Smith and Wesson with that big crime. And so bill. I'm at the gun shop. Yeah. And I, and I'm, I'm at the gun shop and the, is the owner who came out and he goes, well, why aren't you considering the Springfield? He goes, this is a fantastic gun. And I said, because I, they just, they chafed me and, and I, I don't know that I'll ever own one. And he goes, well, you know, I understand that you're kind of upset about the politics, but, you know, it's new ownership and, um, and, and, and it, it really, this is. You're talking the about the Smith and Wesson. What did I say? Said Springfield. Springfield. Yeah. Yeah. The Smith and Wessons. Yeah. And he goes, you know, what, I don't think about the politics when it's my life that's on the line. And, and that's true. Well, that's true, but it's not like you can't. It's not like Springfield or Smith and Wesson is the only quality gun maker. Correct. They're not. Correct. So, There's so many good ones out there today that it's it, it's not an issue. See, I mean, see that's what happens in, in in a market where there's a lot of buyers. Guess what happens? You tend to find more quality because the competition correct. is stiff. So. Well, yeah, it's just like the auto industry back in the 80s and 90s. The American auto automobiles in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s were junk. That was suck o -matic with some Absolute few exceptions, suck. but they were suck because they had hardly yeah. any competition. Right. And, and, and it was kind of similar with firearms back then as well. Now you have all the European models. You got stuff coming out of Korea and Japan and all these other countries. Little mighty Keltec. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I did yeah, that. Well, I did look that. At where, dude, look what, look where Caltech was twenty or thirty years ago. They were, they were, they were basically Saturday Night Special junk guns, and now, right. and they're, now they're making some. They're, they're actually, I, I mean, I, they're, they're, they're getting more and more uh, quality to their guns. But, but the, I have to say about Caltech, they're actually trying to innovate. They're coming up with some interesting new gun ideas. I mean, even that sub two thousand, I. I love that gun. I someday I want to have one. I don't. I mean, it would be a great car gun, maybe, but uh, just it's just a great little portable fold-up, uh, you know, almost a camp gun. But they're 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 yeah, innovating. Well, they are, and 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 every year their their quality improves, and their customer service improves, and they're they're lining up to become a serious firearms manufacturer and i would rather send my money now to one of those guys than to springfield armory and, and rock river arms I, I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm, I'm not going to choose a a home defense or carry handgun from caltech just yet sorry just not on my list and that's understandable but i would for a toy gun 
like a, a range toy or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, where my life is not on the line. I'm not quite ready to give Celtic that status yet. I, if you get Celtic haters, you can go on and uh, you can, you know, deal with Dimitri on that. I think we're done with this. What do you say we move on to the next story? I just, I want to, I want to mention one firearm. And I'm looking it up. I want to make sure. All right. Go ahead. Look it up. We're looking it up right now. All right. So instead of, instead of a Springfield Armory in, in 308, you can look at a company that's relatively new called Noreen Firearms. They make an AR chambered in 308, chambered in 30 out 6, chambered in 7 millimeter Remington Magnum, and chambered in 300 Win Mag. Uh, and the industry seems to think it's a pretty reliable platform. I mean, they haven't been out for a long, long time. It's not as proven as the M1A. But by golly, I'd like to give them a try. If the price is right, especially, yeah. Of yeah, so, so, so there you go, the Springfield. M1A. There you go, Rock River. There you go, Springfield. And, and you know what? I was going to go to... I'm going to go to a story that I was actually going to go to the end because I think this story actually ties into why it is that so many gun owners are going to be pretty unforgiving unforgiving because and let me let me correct myself i did say noreen n-o-r-e-e-n firearms okay i think that's what you did say okay yeah. right. so the headline boom there it is facing pro gun movement Anti, it's cut. It's kind of cut. Cut off. The the headline is cut off on here. Let me move this over here. Oh, never mind. I got I cropped it wrong. Well, I didn't crop it wrong. We're all different. But facing pro gun movement, anti gun movement feels defiant. And this is in VOA News. And it. Uh, I'll read a couple of the, the the first paragraphs here. Donald Trump, okay, darling of the National Rifle Association, has has as they word it, custody of the Oval Office. Uh, the Republican-controlled Congress already has ditched one Obama-era rule to tighten access to gun, and an emboldened NRA has a much more ambitious plan afoot for easing state and national gun laws. That's right. Uh, but gun control advocates do not want your pity. Thank you very much. No, they don't. Because these people are freaking ruthless, and they haven't gone anywhere. And this is this is what we realize. We realize that this it's there. There's no end fight for those of you who are taking the path, the legislative path. I have a different philosophy, but for those of you who are taking the legislative path, this is a never-ending fight. No matter how much legislation passes that gives people the freedom to do what they should by nature alone be able to do, which is to defend themselves with the best tools available at the time, they, they, they're still there. And they're going to come back. Remember, elections, they, they, they go many different ways. Your guy's up on top this week, so this is... Or this this year, and their guys on top next year, and so this is what uh, uh, Sh Shannon Watts, who founded Moms Demand Action for Gun Saints in America, may be one of the worst human beings to ever have existed on the face of the planet, a lying liar who lies about lies. What that would that would that make the lying about lies truth? No, in her case, it wouldn't. It, a double lie is still a lie. It's just an extra thick lie. We have become the David to the NRA's Goliath. That's a freaking lie. They have more money than the freaking NRA. They are well-funded, all of these anti-gun groups. Who said Shannon Watts, who founded whatever. I already said that. Uh, oh, following the 2012 shooting death. Okay, we're going to bring up uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy uh, Newton. Uh, the group is now part of Every Town for Gun Safety, which is backed by billionaire... Michael Bloomberg. That's right. We feel much more invigorated because we know how important that is, given that Donald Trump is president. 
And the NRA spent more than well, and the, and the NRA spent more than thirty million dollars to help get him there. Well, if they spent thirty million dollars, it was money well spent for them. Actually, having lost well, actually that remains to be seen. Actually, having lost any sense of control in Congress and in many states facing bills that are irresponsible, as in replace irresponsible with gives people the freedom to defend themselves, and I am significantly triggered by people having that power to defend themselves. Oh, this is David Chipman who's speaking now. Allows us in the gun violence prevention movement to organize and provide resistance. They, they, these, these folks, they're, they're, I'm going to go down here to another quote here by Adam Winkler, a UCLA law professor and expert, quote-unquote expert on gun policy. There is no doubt that the election of Donald Trump was a major setback for the gun control movement. Although President Obama was not able to get any new gun control legislation passed, under President Trump, the NRA is going to be looking to loosen gun laws and is likely to succeed. Well, I sure freaking hope so. So don't fall asleep. <laughs> and the gun owners know this. That's why what Springfield Armory did and what Rock River Island or Rock River I don't know, whoa, I don't wanna I don't wanna mick Rock Island. I don't think they're the same. I, I hope they're not. They're not the same company. I sure hope not. No, I, I really don't think so. Somebody correct me on that. I don't think Rock Island Arms and Rock River are the same company, right? Right, Dimitri? No, they're not. Okay, good, because I really like Rock Island, and I have a... There's a 1911 that they make that uh, they that's chambered in a 10 mil. It's a double stack. 1911, yeah, but double stack, 10 mil. I think people I think people think of them as the same company. They're, they're, they're going to be hurt by this. They're going to have to, they're going to have to put out some, some serious, uh, uh, campaign. Yo, man, this that whole rock us. river stuff, man. No, 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 that's not us. We, we, homie don't play like that. So, so these folks, they're, they're, they're not going anywhere. They, they never do go anywhere. They are always there. They're always persistent. They have a long term outlook. Actually, they're much more long-term, much more, I'll say, sophisticated strategically than your allies on the right are. And uh, they have culture behind them. They have all of Hollywood and all of, of mainstream news doing their beck and call, chipping away. Chipping, chip, chip, chipping away at the gun well, culture. Well, I think they they have popular culture, but popular culture is just that. It's popular and it's fleeting. And when you have, uh, you know... It's, it's real power, nonetheless. Asses, it is, but when you have celebrities making complete and utter asses of themselves by saying the dumbest thing and then coming out, oh, who's the singer? Um, female, relatively popular. Well, you've narrowed life. that down. N well, female that's singer. Of them. That's fifty percent of them. What? I don't know. Um, what the hell's her name? Her father was used to be a preacher. She rebelled against the preacher man. Oh. Uh, uh, do you mean? Uh, oh. Come on, come on. Come on. What's her name? <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, her, she her, made some that girl. Come off as that racist. Girl. She came off. She made some comments that seemed to be a little racist recently. Taylor uh, Swift is that who you mean? Taylor Swift? No, no, she's too hot to be that dumb. Oh, My, wait. Miley Cyrus? Oh, no, no, a little I... older, dark hair, jet black hair. Oh, I know who you mean. You mean the? Come on, give it. <laughs> ah! Now what's her name? My brain is like, no, I'm not giving you information. Your brain today, not working right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. guns. I ain't talking. Singing. I know it's like I, I have anyway. To, I have to switch switch gears. Uh, the uh, oh, chain to the rhythm girl. Chain to the rhythm. I'm gonna type that and get to her name. Oh, I kissed the boy or I kissed yeah, the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same same oh. person. Okay, that one. Anyway, yeah, so Katie, you know, Katy Perry. Thank you. You're welcome. That one. Wow. So, I mean, she she's all about, you know, all this social justice stuff. And then she comes out and makes racist comments or at least allegedly made racist comments. 
I mean, the most racist people I've ever met were Democrats. I'm sorry to say it, and I'm not a proponent of the Republican Party by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, how they could you fight, be? They're they the Democrat hide. Party. Yeah, they're all. They hide behind their social justice, you know, equity and equality. And in fact, in private, they're all a bunch of bigots and they just hide behind that because they don't want to be called out as racist. They're t mortified of the con of the term. That, that's that's who most of these people are. So what you're saying is they come. And, well, yeah, well, the news media might be a little bit more effective. But then again, our young people, how much are young people watching? But the young, you know what? Young people are watching BuzzFeed. OK, and BuzzFeed is definitely going to be pushing an anti-gun agenda young people are watching mtv which has now basically become trashy sjw documentary crap and talk shows and teen pregnancy was it, crap was it churchill was it churchill that said if you're young and not a liberal you have no heart right and if you're old and have no and not a conservative you have no brains yeah but he was wrong and that's the he reality of it no he was wrong because if you yeah. have brains, you're not going to be a well, conservative. Well, it de depends, depending on the definition of conservative. But I'm saying, typically speaking, people, as they get older and their ideas mature, they realize things and how they were manipulated and how things were askew. And I think a lot of people look at these entertainers over time and say, really? You're, you're, you're preaching to me about global warming and you – ride around in lear jets you go over all over the world you have you have um yachts that suck up more diesel than a freaking uh, a train delivering products and you and you live in a you know 100,000 square foot home that sucks up so much electricity i mean people start to catch on that these people are hypocrites and they they hide behind what they say to hide what they really feel and believe but Lacey Green said guns are part of my patriarchy. Oh, so I'm not sure what that means, but well, she's a, uh, a a a very popular feminist who has a show on MTV. Those folks actually are probably doing more damage. Well, I don't want to say they're doing damage. I, you know, everybody makes a choice. You choose to believe what you believe. So she's not damaging you. You are choosing to be damaged by the cancer that comes out of her freaking mouth. But but nonetheless, these folks are making it easy for younger people. But but at the same hand, what's happening? I don't know how we're getting on this topic, but hey, let's do this. What's happening with the whole light with progressivism? And when I say progressivism, I mean it in the sense that that most people are using progressivism. It's a there's a certain basic cultural beliefs, you know. You're 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 per, you're, you're feminist. You're, uh, you know, you're 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 hating on the white man. You're you're pro-gay. You're anti-heterosexual. Uh, but what they're doing, this, they're creating these really really rigid rules and regulations for you to stay in their club. And I think well, that it's already becoming – It's you're no longer a rebel by saying, I think it's okay for gay people to marry whoever they want to – that's not the rebel uh, 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 point of view. The rebel point of view is – really, this is now the rebel point of view. This is now the controversial statement to make in America, this. And, and I'll, I'm going to make a statement which I believe, which is I, I don't – you know, I don't really necessarily – approve of the gay lifestyle but yeah live and let live that is a controversial statement right there that will get you in trouble that will get you hate mail <laughs> that will get people coming at you and calling you a homophobe well so they're creating this know. weird this new weird cultural reality where uh, I'll say, for lack of a better term, conservatism is becoming the rebellious position. Even even though Donald Trump is one and a Republican, the Republicans in Congress, Donald Trump, they're 
I mean, you say Donald Trump. I mean, he's politically incorrect and he says wild things. But, 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 but fundamentally, Donald Trump is no social conservative, and the Republicans in Congress overwhelmingly are no social conservatives. Well, but you look at history and you see how popular movements and popular culture becomes codified and it becomes, you know, established culture and and the norm, and there's always a rebellion against that. And you, even with the hippies, you see a lot of people who were hippies, their kids turned out to be anti-hippie. They ended up becoming very conservative. They, they were rebelling against their hippie parents. In historical cycles, they refer to that as the, uh, the Dionysian and the Apollonian cycles. So the Dionysian is the licentiousness, the wild, crazy, anything goes, which... Well, the wild, crazy, anything goes starts to become codified. So, so yeah, the wild and crazy, anything goes, but then they have to define what the anything is and what goes. And, they, and, and then uh, the rebellion happens, and then they become, like, really, really conservative and, and disciplined. And this is the Puritans. Apollonian. Yeah, the, the Puritans. So I, I, I think that, that we have been in the Dionysian phase for... I don't know, really, I, I mean, obviously it started in the 60s, and I think it's it's reaching its peak, and you're about ready to see it it it, it go wax uh, back to or wane uh, and head back towards the Apollonian, such, such as the well, cycles you, are. Well, you see it around, but you see it around the world. You see the the Marxists in, in Eastern Europe who were um, defeated by... People who, I mean, look at Russia. These Marxists were anything goes uh, as long as you bow to the state. And now the reaction in, in Russia is some people, a lot of people, I think it's like 30% of Russians want to bring back a czar. I mean, they are, I think the Russians have built something like 15,000 churches in the last 10 to 20 years. That the, there is a huge movement in Russia. You look th throughout the Middle East. You look at Turkey; they're having a a, a, a significant. Well, they're going seriously Apollonian, aren't they? They're going yeah. really you, dangerously you, Apollonian, like 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 you know the Nazis right. were dangerously Apollonian, like medieval, like medieval Apollonian. Yeah, so you, so, you so yeah, at, let, let's make so, it clear: I'm not advocating Apollonian or Dionysian. I'm I'm observing here. Correct. And but, here we are, where the alternative culture is not what's happening now the craziness the free loving whatever accept everyone for what they are don't judge the, now, the now it's that, judge it's judge judge hard yeah, but the culture that's developing against that is uh pardon my french uh shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down i don't want to listen to what you have to say get in my face and i'll right. let the teeth out of mouth. But, but that's happening on the left and the right they're both be, they're getting oh, to that point both of them they both want to bash each other's heads in you know you've got you've got you've got if you're looking at the meme reality uh what what you see from antifa you see all these memes uh good good night alt right and punch a commie that's that's their memes but on the right what you see is helicopters for commies meet a commie get him in a helicopter and throw them out of a helicopter. That's those those are the prevailing views that are starting to emerge on the on on the left and the right. What's what's interesting from a gun perspective is both sides have a vested interest. Uh, I'm not talking about the more extreme the, the 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 ones out there that are actually showing up to do these battles. You know, the battle for Berkeley. Uh, they they both have vested interest in having access to guns. If you look at what's going on in Venezuela, uh, you can see a portent of what may come down the road, whether it's someone in the right and someone in the left. When I say right and left, I'm doing I'm using American understanding of left and right, which not really a reality in my opinion. But what's going on? What 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 may very well happen is what's happened in Venezuela, where. Uh, uh, they're, they're trying to crack down on gun ownership for everyone 
while at the same time they're trying to get guns into the hands of their partisan supporters. And I think that's what well, you're going to end what... up seeing. You're going to end up seeing at some point if the well, right, if it's the right that has the power, they're going to be looking to change gun laws in a way that targets people who will be on the left. And the left will do the same for the right. They'll be writing, the left will be writing in exemptions for their guys to get more guns. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Well, it's what happened in Germany. Right. They made the, it made it uh, impossible for Jews to own guns, but made it easy for everyone else to get guns. It's what happened in Turkey with the Armenians. They made it impossible for the Armenians to get guns, but they made it easy for everyone else to get guns. It's what happened to Native Americans across this great land over and over and over again. It's it's a if that's a repeat. If, if, if you're on the right, what you're going to see from the right, you're going to see that no fly, no buy, and they're going to determine who's on the terror watch list and who will be on that terror watch list. It'll be terror groups and it'll be a lot of leftist groups. And if you're on the left, I believe the way that the left is going to do it is they're going to create these pseudo paramilitary groups in a way like uh, Obama was done. If you look up Obama first year, and I think you're going to find some interesting stuff there. Uh, he's already was trying to create it didn't he didn't, it never quite materialized but he was already trying to create the citizen army so what you'll have what the left will have is no 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 that they will not be looking to loosen gun restrictions what they'll be looking to is create a whole new class of government workers who have guns the citizen militia who are group. who have sworn their allegiance yeah. to the leftist groups like Name any list of any of them. Yeah. yeah. I, either way, the, the, the person in the middle, uh, by American terms, in the middle, the person, and I, I would actually say the person who's on the right of all those folks in the way that I think of left and right, but the person in the middle who really just wants to live and let live and, you know, whatever you want to do, I don't care. Just leave me alone. That person is, is their voice is being drowning out, drowned out. And it's really more and more the the shrill, hardcore left, the shrill, hardcore left by American terminology. So something, something's going to give, which ties us back to Springfield Armory. When you're looking at these guys that, that know full well, e even if it's unconscious, you know, at a subconscious level, the gun owners know full well what's at stake. They know full well that the left means well, and the so left does, means dude. to do very vicious things, as, as does the right. Don't 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 kid yourself. Yeah, but Springfield Armory knows this. Don't right, kid yourself. right, exactly. And Springfield, and they're hedging, and they're hedging their, their bets. Yes, right. They're they're talking to the leftists who are anti guns and say, look, they want to survive in that world. I mean, right. They want to survive and they, say, they look, we get can the government you guys contracts. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yep. They they want to you know, when when you so, when you assemble first year, buy, you know, buy our guns. So and that's what Ruger was doing back in the 70s and 80s and well, thank God the ownership and the leadership there have changed because that's not what they're doing now. Hell, you could not buy a Mini 14 with a magazine larger than 5 or 10 rounds back then. I think even 10 rounds was impossible to get. Now you can get anything from them with 30 rounds. Uh, go nuts. Their, their whole culture has changed, or at least on the surface it would appear to have changed. And maybe they were getting their ass handed to them by other companies, so they had to change. Um, you, If you want to look at gun companies that maybe you can trust long term, look for the gun companies that are not out aggressively going after military contracts. Because they're kind of, they, they kind of have to hedge their bets. They're right. they're in bed with the government folks, and they don't know who's going to win well, or lose, at, and they're being very pragmatic. Well, yeah, look at Colt. Colt has changed their ARs so that if you wanted to make them full auto, you can't. Right. They. Yeah, you were telling me about this. Yeah. So. Uh, other manufacturers are just making the AR the way that they've been making the AR. But to actually go in and modify your, your AR so that you can't make, so that someone cannot make it full auto, um, 
tells you something about the culture and who they're pandering to. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty self-evident. So, um, I don't know yeah, how many more years believe... Colt has left anyway. I, I think yeah, one of well, the reasons it's held I... on this long is just because of the name. Oh, it's because of its name. It's for legacy. Sure. It's, it's fantastic legacy, yeah. but 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 when you have little guys who are startups who are producing fantastic products, uh, who can go head to head with some of these big guys, uh, my opinion is give them a chance because I suspect those little guys got into the industry for the right reason, versus the big guys who they're they're more politically motivated. Well, I don't know whether there's I mean if 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 you're going to get into business the right reason is to make money otherwise what's the point? So I just want to clarify. I I want to put myself out there saying that but if your target is government contracts it's going to be it's a natural thing for you to want to play along and hedge your bets as as Springfield has done as as Rock River has done. If you're not pursuing government contracts if you're developing a different business model that doesn't rely on huge government contracts well then i mean great you're 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 predisposed your business model puts you in a position where it's in your best interest to be for uh you know no gun no very very if any uh, no, uh you don't want any gun restrictions at all really it's in your best interest to have little gun restrictions. But if you're a company that's targeting these large contracts, that's not necessarily a problem for you. It's easy for you to make a little trade-off so that you can get I, – I mean, you, if you think about it, if you sell a government contract, it's so much easier. You can, you can, you can manufacture at a, a, a much higher level, which lowers your cost. Even if you're selling that for, to them cheaper, and you will be, you're still going to be making a huge profit, qu quick profits, easy turnarounds. You think about you, you don't have all that uncertainty. You, you, you produce a certain amount of guns, you well, market them. It, but it's not just that. It's also the legacy. I mean, Colt, Springfield, go down the list, Browning. Huge the, government, these manufacturers government contracts. Who, right. Who And these government contracts now – you're looking at a hundred years later, and my God, Beretta. Uh, you, you, Beretta, you at, what's Beretta? Yeah, Beretta just lost a big contract, and now well, they six did, hours they have, moved in. Yeah, but just you know, the name alone, Beretta. Yeah. Oh, the Beretta. The military, U.S. military was using those for forever. They, they're good guns. Well, Beretta's also has a legacy going back a few hundred years, actually. So. Correct. Correct, but but when you get a military contract in the United States, it 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 legitimizes you, you. Oh yeah, to a great part of the market. Yeah, so it's almost you know I'm in a newspaper business, and the how I do news it kind of suffers because I do not pursue a good relationship with the government. So my newspapers don't tend to get the inside story from from government my newspapers don't get the government contracts because governments pay newspapers to advertise they're very big fat contracts we don't get them and we don't get them because we don't play along and that's why that's why when you see so much newspapers out there that oh, why are they where you know the newspaper is supposed to be the quote-unquote fourth estate the final check on government. It can't be the final check on government when it is, in fact, government. It depends on government. Uh, it depends on government for a lot of big fat contracts, but but uh, less so than the gun industry. But but more importantly, it depends on government sources for big fat stories that drive traffic that get it revenue. And that's the same thing with the government gun manufacturers. It, it depends on government to get those big fat easy contracts and if it doesn't get those big fat easy contracts then it's got to do it the hard way it actually has to market like you know i mean they, they said certainly they spend tons of money marketing to governments but you know, they they they, they got to spend even once they get that government contract oh man they get a government contract and they get that going on for a few years you know 10 year whatever 
length of time they sign these contracts for, man, that, that creates such a comfort zone for that company that they'll never get just selling to the free market, ever. I got nothing else to say. I think we've got reached the end of the show, Dimitri. Um, one more thing, just one more thing. Eddie Munster. Eddie Munster is a rhino. He's the weasel from Wisconsin. Wait. And he. Oh, oh he Paul really Ryan, Eddie to... Munster. Paul Ryan is Eddie Munster. Now? What did I say? You called him Eddie Munster. Yeah, Eddie Munster. Why do you call him that? I don't get the Because he has a widow's peak and he reminds me of Eddie Munster. Okay. He's Eddie he Munster. Looks like a little vampire. Okay. He's Eddie Munster now. Eddie Munster, the weasel from Wisconsin. So, yeah. Um, I just. People who put their faith in a political party are always going to be disappointed because these political parties united 100 years ago. Um, and it's essentially the same party. Pretty much. Uh, Democrats and Republicans voted to, f to create the IRS. Democrats and Republicans voted to create the Federal Reserve. Democrats and Republicans voted to make the Senate directly appointed. You go on and you on. You mean and directly on. elected as opposed to appointed by state legislatures? Yeah, so to a, a point, correct. And here we are. The, the Democrats didn't put us in this mess. They're not solely responsible for that. The Republicans didn't put us solely in this mess. They're not solely responsible for that. It was a team effort, boys and girls. Go team! They ran, they ran the. They, they were playing a football game, but they were both fighting to see. Uh, which one of them would get the ball in the end zone. They were both going for the same end zone. And here we are. They're still fighting to, to be the ones to put the ball in the end zone to say, well, no, we're the ones who scored. Right. But they're both they're trying not, to score the same in... points, okay? <laughs> they're not, yeah, exactly. they're not trying to score different points. So on that note. It's the same team. It's the same team, folks. Fundamentally, this is why I call myself a vis privacian. Vis meaning power, privis meaning individual. The most essential thing that you can do Sounds is... disgusting. Well... So, vis privacian? So, vis, Dude, vis do you have privacian. to lance that? No, you don't. You have, to, you have to deal with its power and its strength and its awesomeness. You're... You're so broken up in my headphones, I can't understand what you're saying at this point. I apologize. For your lack of understanding. And we'll end it at that. So folks, we'll we'll be back next week. Same bat chime, same more or less same bat channel. And uh, we'll either be on Liberty Principle either Monday night or Tuesday night, depending on Dimitri. And okay, and Dimitri can't hear me at all. So we're gonna go ahead and end this show. We will see you next week. Dimitri, you have any last remarks? Any last remarks? Cariño, está de pedia. And there you go. <laughs>